Welcome to episode two in a series where we're looking at Contemporary Learning at Faith Lutheran College. In the first episode, I interviewed Derek Bartels, who's the Director of Innovation Technology at Lutheran Education Queensland. We looked at the, the future of the workforce and how contemporary learning needs to address the, the issues that are arising um, from the workplace of the future. But today we're gonna to talk about the timetable because it's one of the underlying things that happens at schools that either lets us do things or not lets us do things. And up on the screen there is a quote, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. So what we're trying to do is create a timetable that's simple and flexible to allow us to do what we want to do. So I've got, I'll just invite who we've got here. We've got Chris Brennan, who's the Director of Operations and Co-Curricula. We've got Alicia Kent Rooney, who's the Director of Teaching and Learning. And we've got Reid Dobson, who's the Deputy Director of Learning Communities for next year. Um, so we'll start off with Chris. Chris, you look at the timetable. There's a lot of challenges because it's very complex. Do you want to talk about that for a second? Yes, um, look, it, it is quite complex. So in the past, we've had uh, a timetable built around uh, junior subjects would have about eight or nine subjects a year and then your senior subjects come down to about six subjects a year and so what you're trying to do is make them all fit all their subjects all the different teachers trying to fit into uh, the one week uh, and that can be quite challenging in the past we've had two week timetables rotating and, and a lot of those sort of uh, uh, models running uh, what we've tried to do obviously this year uh, next year sorry we're trying to uh, make it so that it's a lot simpler to, to use. We've got a pretty straightforward structure that allows us flexibility across year levels. So we're not worrying about this class isn't on at that time and that class is, and we're, we now have a, a lot simpler structure that we're looking into. Um, and yeah, they can, they can be quite challenging to build. So, so in the past, when I've been at many different schools, Often um, timetable on high schools can look very different in terms of middle years and senior years. Mm -hmm. So often in year seven, schools aim to try to provide as many experiences as they can to kids. So maybe they might do 10 or 11 subjects, but then in senior years, they might only do six subjects. Yeah. And so how does that add complexity to a timetable? So that brings in, it's like the whole level there in complexity becomes, you've got lots of junior subjects running twice a week, and then a lot of your senior subjects are running four times a week. So. And then in between that, you'll have subjects running three times a week, two times a week. And, and the complexity that, that builds in is you've got staff crossing over in, in terms of subjects and where they teach and who, who, where they're teaching. You've got staff teaching in junior and senior years. It, it just, there's a whole level of complexity that brings in um, just hours of timing in, in a week and, and for, for those sort of things. So it makes it difficult to timetable staff and that sort of yeah. It's very, very hard to timetable a year 12 teacher to teach in year seven Correct. consequently. Yeah. Um, and, and Alicia, I suppose, when kids are doing 10 or 11 subjects in the, in the, in the junior years of high school, that adds an extra level of stress to kids, doesn't it? 100%, we want to peel that right back. Mm. Um, learning should be joyful, it should be a really positive experience and it should be purposeful and authentic. So by, by reducing the number of student um, subjects that students have, where our aim is to go deeper, not broader, and allow them choice and voice within those subjects rather than across the board. Yeah, that's right. So we're trying to make it far more simpler. So you might think though, that by um, offering less subjects, that means the kids aren't getting as many experiences. So every student from year seven through to year 12 is doing six subjects, that's correct, isn't it? Yeah, so the model, uh, we, yeah. The yeah. model we came up with was six subjects every, every uh, year level. Um, and that would mean, it's on the screen, I think, six subjects and then each subject would run um, across four days of the week. So, yeah, so one of them, but they're not just, but a year seven students are not just doing six subjects, are they? So how, how are we gonna give them more experiences? How are we gonna do that? So we'll have on our, we've got our curriculum days, which are their subject days, and then our Wellbeing Wednesday. And that's our day where, if you have a look at our Wellbeing Wednesday, which Mr. Dobson's going to talk about in a moment, uh, that Wellbeing Wednesday is full of their house experiences, year level experiences, sport, Christian studies. Uh, that's going to be a day um, really focusing on the well-being of the student um, and also um, just our community in general. Great community events that day. And not all subjects in the middle years are going to be six, they're going to be six months long, some of them, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. And why are, we, why are we doing that? So six months long. So currently what we do at the moment was um, lessons two, twice a week. Um, and then they would go for a year long. So now what we've done is reduced a lot of our junior subjects to semester long, four times a week. So it's still the same amount of time that they're getting in those subjects. But what we've done is just made it a little bit easier to work with 
And again, it just, it, it means that teachers will now see all their students every day of the week. All right, so Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. So if a student misses on a Monday lesson, they're, only, they're not gonna miss a whole week's worth of work because their next lesson's not till the Friday. They've now got four days they're gonna, gonna see that teacher as well. Okay, great. And um, Alicia, what are some of the other benefits of this of this timetable? Oh, there's so many. Um, yeah, I can't even tell you where to start. So we're really always, like I said, aiming for authentic purposeful learning experiences. So one of the ways we want to do that is to um, de-silo our subjects. So again, in offering less subjects but greater depth, we'll be working towards interdisciplinary learning, which is also cross-curricular learning or integrated learning. And that's that idea, same as we do as adults, that we don't do things in isolation. They're, they're done in relation to other things. So it could look like a project-based approach to learning. It could look like a teacher-led whole group um, thematic unit. There's a whole range of ways to explore, explore that. But at the centre of it is student voice and agency and empowerment and ownership over the, their learning journey. It's not about the teacher at the centre. Is there a possibility of students moving between year levels for, for certain subjects? Mm, absolutely. So we've been working really hard, Chris especially has been working hard on stacking our timetable so that certain subjects run above each other, so that there is absolutely that flexibility and, and that encouragement for students to move into a year level that suits them. The idea of a year, an arbitrary age-based year level is quite a, a traditional method of education. Mm. So if we're moving towards contemporary education, students should be able to move to the, the skill level or the interest area mm. that suits them best rather than just a year level. So yes, we absolutely are aiming for that. Oh, that's fantastic. Mm. So just summarising so far, we've, we're going to have six six um, subjects yep. per, per year level yep. across the board. Across the board. Makes yeah. it heaps more simple to yep. create the timetable, allows yep. greater flexibility with teacher allocations, mm -hmm. that sort of stuff. Six periods in a day. Six periods a day, yeah. Uh, which means that kids will see their teacher every single day, every single except, day. For except for the Wednesday. Um, yep. It also means that we can have movement between year levels. Yep and greater integration between subject areas as well. Yeah. Um, so this is a really good platform to move in the future, isn't it? Correct. Yeah. And that's what this, this is really about, setting up the structure that we need to move into this contemporary learning model. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, so Reid, we'll talk a bit about Wednesday now. So what we looked at was all the time that was given to Christian studies, um, to chapel, to assemblies, to sport, all those sort of things. Looked at how much time gets dedicated to that and came out to be basically a whole day. Yeah. And so we decided, how about we pull all that time out of Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, mm -hmm. whack it in the centre and make it like a chill out day, like it's a break. We have curriculum Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, but in the centre is a well-being day. Mm -hmm. It's a good break. That would definitely be backed up by research. Mm -hmm. However, this is the challenge that I, <laughs> I find quite interesting. If you ask the kids what they enjoy, they probably wouldn't say they enjoy Christian studies, pastoral care, assemblies and chapel. So we're actually taking all the things that kids may not like and putting them on the Wednesday. Mm. And so we've spoken a lot about this as a team, is that we want Wednesday to be the best day of the week. And so we need to have student voice and student choice mm. and all those sort of things in there and actually develop this in consultation with the kids. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, for us, Wednesday should be the best day of the week. And it's, it's just geared at what students want to do and it's for the students. So. Um, where they might not have had a lot of choice around what they were doing in PC, well that'll all change on Wednesdays. There we, the extra time gives us flexibility to um, have things like uh, student-based learning projects that where they can explore something that they're really interested in. Yes, they'll have their Christian studies, they'll have age-appropriate pastoral, pastoral care programs uh, for the middle years and the senior years, but then they'll also have opportunities to break out and explore something in that field that they might be really interested in. Um, and I think that's the, that's a really interesting part of it. I think um, talking to uh, the house leaders and, and, and Mr. Skinner Martin, what we're also really excited about is um, uh, opportunities to explore leadership um, and, and mentoring and these sorts of things. So uh, care group will change. Uh, we know that. We've, we've spoken a little bit about that already and, and it will become more of a, a mentoring time where students can work one-on-one -on -one with someone and, and really look at their academics and their holistic growth in detail. Um, and, and yeah, just learn about the world that they live in and, and become fantastic community members, which is what we're after. That's really, that's really exciting. Um, so let's say uh, we come to a situation where we find out that our attendance records are going down on a Wednesday. How are we as a school going to respond to that? 
that, that's the beauty of the Wednesday. You know, we, we can respond to that because we can provide flexibility. We can find out what, well, what are we missing? What, what, how are we not engaging these students and what do we need to put in place uh, to make sure that they're coming there and that they're finding value in that, um, in, that, in that day? And look, for me, I can't see how you couldn't. It's based on student interest. Um, we've had a, a really great response just changing up sport this, uh, this semester and allowing kids to choose extracurricular activities and interests that they, that they love other than those on the sporting field. And, and our, our Wednesday will be based around that real student agency and, and student, student interest, student choice. That's really exciting actually in terms of what's happening on the Wednesday. This is a really good foundation for moving the college forward. I think this timetable provides a lot of flexibility and something we can build upon. In the next episode, we're going to look at the staffing restructure and how we structured the leadership here at the college to best support this movement into the future. I'll be interviewing um, Tyson Kenny, our Deputy Principal for that, and I look forward to sharing that with you at a later date.